Hello and welcome to the Poor Hammer Podcast, episode 35. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? And we have you back to your regularly scheduled Warhammer content, No Magic Here. Get that Watsy shit out of here. Yeah, that cash grab that got me to spend hundreds of dollars. <laughs> All right, so for this week, we're going to keep it nice and short. Don't want to have another hour plus long rant about some topic. I want to keep this one simple. So we're going to be discussing a character build. This is a complex data sheet to walk through. It'll probably be a 10 minute segment and then we will get out of here. Yeah. All right. Without any further ado, let's jump into the topic. Sounds good. Last time we did a single data sheet, it was kind of my baby, the bread and butter, orc, commandos, super fun. This time, Brad, what do you got for us? So it's not so much a data sheet as a build of a character. I'm not just going to talk about the Thousand Sun Sorcerer and Terminator armor data sheet vanilla as it stands, because characters are so fluid in how they can end up. Right, there's... So much options and like what you're trying to actually do. Right. There's just too many things that are variable. Yeah. So instead of that, I want to do a specific pet build of mine that I've talked about briefly before, but it could use a nice dedicated topic. Okay. So this is my Smash Terminator. It is not the most competitive thing you can build, but it is in the good enough spectrum to where it should trade up in points and be worth it to play one. Or at the very least, make the opponent dedicate a decent amount of their own points to deal with them. Yeah. So in Thousand Suns, you do have the plus side of if you're taking Exalted Sorcerers or Aramon, you can take Sorcerers either in Normal Power Armor or Terminator Armor without eating up one of your slots in your patrol or your battalion. That is nice. So all this is costing you is the points and the CP you spend on it. You're not actually eating one of your HQs on this. To start you off, the basic Sorcerer and Terminator stat line, for anyone unfamiliar, they've got a 5-inch move, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, 9 leadership, and a 2-up save because Terminator armor. 5-up invul because Terminator armor. 3-up weapon skill, 3-up ballistic skill. Their strength 4, toughness 4. Right. Obviously, now it has armor of contempt as well. Which is really nice for Terminators for their point cost. And because it's a Thousand Suns unit, it can cast two spells, it denies one spell, it knows Smite, it knows two powers from Dark Hereticus, and or Discipline of Change. Yeah, I'm still salty about that. <laughs> That's a Grey Knight player. <laughs> the options that you get to choose from. It also has like a base loadout with a staff and a combi bolter, but you can modify it heavily to either have like a force axe, you can give it a combi melta, you can give it a prospering kopesh. So there's a lot of options that you can do to change the loadout. Yeah. I mean, the staff is a pretty good base. It is. But in this case, I drop the combi bolter and I give it a kopesh. Because the kopesh and the four staff complement each other very well at the end of this build. We'll talk about the final numbers once we talk about the build. But to start things off, we're going to blow 2 CP on this character to give it a Relic and a Warlord trait. This used to be quote-unquote free for Thousand Suns to do. Now it's really rough to be spending 2 CP on a character like this, which is very unfortunate. Yeah, it is quite a bit. We're also going to spend some points to upgrade it to be a Battle Psyker, which is an upgrade for sorcerers that allow them to have a ballistic skill and weapon skill of 2+, plus and... It ups their attacks by one to a base of five. That's pretty nice. Yeah, and now that's only five points to take. Right, because they lowered a bunch of those types of extra stuff. Yeah, so from a point standpoint, this is only a 110 point model, even with my five point upgrade on it. That's not bad. I mean, like, at like what we're talking about right now, without all the other stuff, like two up weapon skill with five wounds, five attacks... And like two smashy melee weapons. It's a good start. Yeah. So because this is my specific pet, I always do cult of mutation for it. <laughs> you do love that. We're going to ignore the fact that you should never choose anything but duplicity. I don't want to get into this discussion. Yeah. 
Cult of Mutation is where we're going with this one. And because we're in Cult of Mutation, it has a specific relic that sorcerers can take. It's called Exalted Mutation, and it gives a sorcerer model an extra strength, an extra toughness, and an extra attack. Nice. So that boosts it up to a base 6 attack characteristic, strength 5, toughness 5. Which is pretty nice. Actually going from strength 4 to 5 is a big increase for a lot of combat. So this leaves us with the Warlord trait options. There's two of them. I prefer going Aether Stride because it gets it closer to how jump pack captains tend to be. There is Undying Form, which is your alternative if you want to go very tanky. So Aether Stride, if you choose it, you get three extra inches on the move characteristic, which helps because this Terminator only has a five inch move. Yeah. And more importantly, you can declare a charge in a turn you fell back and when you make a normal move, charge move, advance, or fall back, you move as though you have fly. Importantly, you don't have the fly keyword, so you don't get all the downsides. You only get the plus side while moving. Right, which is really nice. Like, having fly during movement stuff is just convenient. <laughs> like, you actually get to move eight in this case instead of like, oh, there's terrain and stuff in the way. That's going to be weird and... Yeah, no, that's that's pretty nice. But Undying Form's really good. Yeah, so Undying Form, if you want to go tankier, you don't take Aether Stride. I'd only do this if you're, like, deep striking this in with a Brick of Terminators or something. Yeah. But in this case, you get the very basic subtract one from damage characteristics to a minimum of one. It's disgusting resilience. Like, it's always good. Yeah, I mean, it's just a very powerful effect, especially when you're dealing with something like this that has so much other defensive layers in addition to it so i mean aether stride is like i'm here for it because five inch move is always brutal when you're in just like you're focused on melee obviously you're smash termi that's tough to do with five inch you felt the pain firsthand when kaldor drago drops down ends up on the wrong side of the board and is going to be shuffling his fat ass over for the next three turns. He never does anything. It's so, so disappointing <laughs> when you just can't move, basically. So, yeah. So because we're playing as Mutation, we actually get a very strong psychic power to begin with, which is Warp Reality. For those who don't know it, it's a Malediction with a Warp Charge 6, 24-inch range. When you manifest it, you select a Terrain feature visible to the Psyker. Then you select an enemy unit within three of that terrain feature. It doesn't have to be visible to the Psyker. Until the start of your next Psychic phase, have that unit's movement characteristic and subtract one from advanced and charge rolls for it. This turns anything into a slug. It's like the strongest part of Cult of Mutation by a mile. It's super annoying. And the fact that it's not line of sight, it's line of sight to a terrain feature and then three inches around it, means that, like, you can't really hide from it. Yeah, and if you're on, like, WTC or GW recommended terrain, it is, like, anything can be targeted with this. Yeah. Like, it's very hard to not be in a suicidal position and outside of three from all terrain. Exactly, yeah. It's just one of those, like, a small amount of the board that wouldn't be covered by this range, and that part of the board is completely suicidal to be in. Like, you're going to die. (laughs) So, yeah, Warp Reality is actually really strong. So we want to compliment the fact that this is a Smash Captain equivalent for Thousand Suns. So we want to go with something to help out our Smash Sorcerer. I used to choose slightly differently. Now that Armor of Contempt exists, the 4-up Invuln is not that important of a spell because you've already got a 2-up save. It takes, like, the 4th AP to finally take you past your 4-up. Yeah, I was like, it's still nice, but... Not really needed. (laughs) No. AP4 exactly is the only time it matters now, and it just isn't worth it. Yep. So I've changed it up. Now I take Glamour of Zinch, which is your basic minus one to hit rolls against your Psyker if you cast it, or anything within 18 of the Psyker, whoever you choose. But we're playing this up as you're buffing yourself up. And of course, I'm not going to pass up Swelled by the Warp, which has a Warp Charge of 6. It's a blessing. You can choose a thousand sun within 12 inches of the Psyker until your next psychic phase. Add two to the strength characteristic and one to the attack characteristic. That's disgusting. That bumps it up to (laughs) seven flat with seven attacks characteristic. That is ridiculous. And like, 
if you really need it, the staff is plus three to strength. Technically, if you're getting off swell by the warp, the force axe is a slightly better option because you get a second AP on it. Right. And you'll be at nine versus ten, so it's not going to matter. But I don't like having to rely on Swell by the Warp to hit the wounding T8 on threes. Right. And to be honest, most of the time you're using your Kopesh anyway, so it really doesn't matter. My Smash Sorcerer is also WYSIWYG with a staff, so... Fair enough. So the Kopesh normally swings around at strength 6. If you have Swell by the Warp, it swings around at strength 7. It's got AP minus 3, flat 2 damage. Solid. You're getting seven attacks hitting on twos. You destroy basically anything you swing at other than like an equivalent, you know, Terminator with AOC unit that you're swinging into. So the point of this character is obviously to chase down key characters or high value targets, whether it be a vehicle or or some type of heavy support unit. You can use it to bully any type of less than custodies level defensive thing off of a objective. And you can, because it's such a low wound model, you can obviously still hide it within another unit and not have to deal with it getting shot at directly while being incredibly offensive. Yeah, so I assume that you're not usually using it like deep strike kind of stuff. You're just kind of running it up the board doing what it needs to do when it needs to do it. Yeah, I like keeping it as a mobile flying unit using Aether Stride. That way, if I want to use it to get value victory points through a secondary or something, I have that as an option. Yeah. Or I can just use it to move around mobily and bully. The thing is, because I'm playing this as a Cult of Mutation unit, I can't just teleport everything everywhere every turn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Cult of Duplicity is very balanced. Something like that. (laughs) Yeah, there are some uh, downsides to having fun with your uh, Cult of Mutation. Yeah, so it's helping with a hole that Thousand Suns has when you don't play Cult of Duplicity. Yeah, and it does feel like this Smash Sorcerer, whatever you want to call it, does a good job of bullying off of objectives that are like side objective kind of thing where they're like i'll put this squad of units that aren't like nothing but they'll hold it and i'll ignore that side of the board and then this guy just comes in and smashes them off the point yeah anything like tactical marine equivalents i wouldn't throw him at anything like a terminator brick right i mean he's still only got seven attacks or whatever but i mean even then the problem is he's probably not gonna delete the unit no but he's good at cleaning units which is an important role too right because a lot of times after trades are over you'll end up with a lot of units that only have two or three models yep and you need something to just be able to very reliably clean them up yeah Because you don't want your opponent using those to score objectives. You don't want them to get secondaries off of that. That one random strike marine that's just not dying when it should. (laughs) You don't want to deal with that guy. And at the same time, like, this is only 110 points plus the CP you spent. Yeah. So when you fail case this into being a mobile secondary farmer, it's not like it's a huge loss to you. No. It's just like the... He's not going to get to live his heroic dreams this game, but he's going to get a ton of value. Yeah, sometimes that is the right call. Sometimes you're supposed to just, like, actually win the game through victory points instead of just, like, killing all the opponents at models. Like, strategy there is actually useful. (laughs) All right, that's a quick rundown of the character. I don't want to go too in-depth. I don't want to have to spend 20 minutes talking about lists with it. This is just a fun, short, but sweet topic to talk about a specific type of character that I love to use in my lists. Yeah, it's super interesting and a very cool character. All right, but let's get out of here for the week. So...